Hi, I'm Martin Taylor. I'm taking a look today at the Kobo ebook reader, which Whitcalls is introducing through its stores and online site. Uh, it's going to be the first widely available ebook reader for the New Zealand uh, public. It's pretty well priced at $295. Uh, this is the unit here. We're going to take you through it, show you how it works, and give you an idea whether this is the sort of thing that you'd like to uh, use to introduce yourself to the world of ebook reading. So when you first power your Kobo up, this is what uh, the home screen looks like. It's got a list of the books that you've uh, been reading recently, including your current read, Moby Dick in this case, one of the hundred classics that uh, comes bundled with the Kobo reader. Uh, it's a pretty minimalist looking interface, as you see. There's not a lot of buttons and um, things to press and so forth. Uh, as you'd expect, it's meant to be as easy to use as a book. The uh, screen technology, which is the e-ink screen technology, is designed to as much as possible replicate the paper reading experience. It relies on light coming from outside onto the screen, uh, just like a natural um, uh, reading experience, as opposed to backlit, which is what most computer screens are. This button here is where most of the action is. Um, Kobo calls it the D-pad, which is where you essentially do your uh, selection by pressing in the middle to, for example, pick Moby Dick as the book you want to read. You see that the graphics are, uh, you know, a reasonable kind of grayscale graphics. Uh, the Kobo, you, you page forward by pressing the D-pad on the right, and of course you page back by pressing on the left. Uh, one of the neat features is you can actually adjust your font size up or down to a smaller font just by pressing the up and down button. So um, most of your reading is really going to be done this way and as a sort of a single-handed read, you know, this is a 200 gram or so um, gadget. You can hold it in one hand and you can just kind of page through it. Um, many books, most books, um, will have some way to navigate. For example, choosing your uh, chapter uh, or table of contents. We could go to the table of contents for Moby Dick. Remember when you start the book, of course, it remembers where you left off. So you, um, certainly um, when you've finished a reading session and you're getting back into it, it'll remember where you were. The Kobo is pretty quick as far as these e-ink devices go in terms of screen refresh. So, And as you get uh, used to reading, you usually find that you know by the time you get a couple of lines to the bottom, you press the button, and by the time you've finished, uh, the, the new page has come up. So it doesn't take too much to get used to. In terms of interfaces, the Kobo has a um, place for an SD card which holds about four gigabytes, uh, up to four gigabytes of extra storage. There's a gigabyte on board which will easily um, hold hundreds and hundreds of ebooks uh, even without that external storage device. And you connect it uh, to your computer via a USB cable. There's no wireless um, or similar on the Kobo. It's a bit like your iPod and iTunes. Um, you just connect it using something like the uh, uh, USB cable which is supplied, plugs in here, plugs into your computer and allows you to synchronize the books that you've downloaded, um, your, your new book purchases, That's uh, you can get them onto the Kobo that way. Uh, documents is where you can actually load on, uh, in this case it's just PDF documents at this stage. Um, Kobo supports the EPUB standard for ebooks. Uh, but you can also, if you've got PDF documents such as business use and so on, you can put them on the Kobo um, and load them into the document category, which we'll just take a quick look at. Uh, there's a couple of documents there. One thing I would say is it's not uh, really optimized for PDF viewing. One of the things about EPUB is that it's designed to sort of reflow so that you can change the type size and so forth and the, the books will reflow. Um, to fit the screen, whereas PDFs uh, don't work quite that way. Um, so you might find that you'll uh, have a little bit of difficulty uh, getting uh, a good view and the right kind of screen size. You can see you can change the magnification, but in, in doing so, um, I've noticed with a lot of PDFs, um, particularly slightly more complicated layouts, it doesn't seem to just quite work. So um, my guess is it'll probably be best for the basic a PDF of a Word file or something of that nature rather than a complex PDF. Uh, when you download, you go onto Whitcall's site and download the desktop app which you need to install on a PC or Mac. Uh, basically the way the Kobo works is pretty much the way your iPod works and that um, effectively this uh, application is like iTunes and your Kobo is like your iPod. You plug the Kobo into the PC uh, and uh, that allows you to copy your and synchronize your library, online library, with your uh, 
Kobo for offline reading. Inside the Whitcalls application, as well as your library, of course, um, is the um, store where you can go and buy um, ebooks. Okay, so that's the Kobo Reader. Um, certainly it doesn't do everything. It's got some features missing that you would find on other uh, competitors. Uh, a notable example would be Wireless, which has been uh, a very successful part of Amazon's Kindle, but you'd pay another $120 or $130 to get that uh, feature. Uh, nor, of course, will it surf the net, do your email, or uh, indeed uh, it's uh, not a touchscreen device for those sorts of features. You're probably better to save up some more money, probably quite a bit more money, and uh, wait for the uh, iPad's uh, arrival. But uh, as a way to do what it does do, which is read ebooks and manage your ebook library, it's a great option. And at $295, I think it's probably the cheapest way that you will get into this market uh, and a good way to get started with ebook reading.